Howdy, howdy. Chris here. Welcome back to Garage Noise. On this episode, I'm going to share with you step-by-step -step procedures on how to repaint a new aftermarket hood. So I've been driving this vehicle for a few months now, black primer, no paint, and it's starting to break down in the sun. So I had a few hours here in between jobs, and I figured I'm going to get this painted and then drive it home. So we have about two to three hours to get this done. So the first thing I wanted to do is to clean it real well, make sure there's no contaminants on it. So I went over it with some, some water-based cleaner, cleaned it off really well, and then I went over it with some wax and grease remover. And now we need to sand it, and I'm gonna start off with 320 grit sandpaper and get this nice and smooth and ready for some primer. When you're prepping out your aftermarket hood for paint, there's a few ways you can go about it. You could sand it with 600, and theoretically it would be ready for paint. Now, if you're concerned about aftermarket primer and the quality of it, you could prime it, sand it down, and it would be ready for paint. Or you could just seal it after the 600 before you put your base coat on. So there's a few ways you can go about it, but for this case, this primer's been sitting out the sun and it's deteriorating, so we're gonna put primer on it before we paint it. So one thing you always wanna look for is dents in your aftermarket part. This had a couple dents and I did look it over beforehand, but I missed a couple things. So I did straighten those out with a hammer and a spoon. I knocked down a couple high spots, leveled it out. There's still a little bit of a dent in this hood, but this is just a commuter vehicle. It's my personal vehicle. I'm not super concerned about it. If you need additional information on how to repair small dents, check out the video link at the end. Now we need to tape off this hood for primer. And what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna back tape the perimeter of this hood and get it ready for a plastic. Now I'm gonna wrap this vehicle with plastic. I started to put paper down on the tape, but decided against it and just go with plastic. It'd be easier. Now this is an automotive treated plastic. It's designed so the paint won't uh, flake off of it during your painting process. Uh, so the paint will stick to it. Uh, you can purchase this at your local uh, O'Reilly's or on Amazon. I have links down in the description if it's something you're interested in, if you're interested in any of the tools or products that I use here in this video. So what I've done is I've cut out the area that we're painting, and now we'll tape down the plastic to that tape that's on the edge of the hood. Okay, so now we have this Honda hood all sanded, went over with 320, and then I went over with a scuff pad, a 320 grit scuff pad. We masked it off with plastic. So we're ready to put some 2K urethane primer on it. We're gonna put a primer that is a direct to metal primer because we have a couple little bare spots here. I'm not really that concerned about it, but the direct to metal primer should take care of that. So let's mix up some of the 2K primer. We're gonna use Roberlo ME1. This primer mixes up four to one. That's four parts primer, one part activator. And then we're gonna put one part of reducer in it. This is gonna help thin it out help it to lay down smooth, and it's also gonna help it dry just a little bit quicker since we're in a little bit of a time crunch. I've got my primer all mixed up and I'm ready to spray it. So I wanna tack it off just before I spray my primer. This is gonna remove any dust particles. I've got a tack cloth here, and this is just a sticky cloth that's gonna grab any particles of dust that are la have landed on the hood. The paint gun I'm using today for this entire job from primer to clear is a 3M performance gun. Now this is the 1.4 tip for primer. Um, because I reduced it, it sprays it out nice and smooth. 3M performance gun is a great gun. If you haven't checked out the review and demo on it, check it out. I'll leave a link at the end. I feel like this gun requires a little bit less air pressure than a conventional gun. Um, so if you have a, a little bit undersized compressor, this is a good gun for you. Now the air pressure I'm using when spraying this primer is right around 20 PSI. I don't need a lot of air pressure. I've got my volume turned three turns out from closed um, and my fan pattern is set at wide open. If you've decided to primer your hood before painting it, you don't need a ton of primer on your hood. One coat will be sufficient, one good coat, and uh, you should be good. You don't need multiple coats. We're not blocking out any dents. Now, if you were straightening some dents and priming those, then you would want a few coats of primer in order to get some material there that you can block it out. But for these purposes, we just need one good coat, one flat good coat. We want it to dry pretty quickly here since we only have a few hours. I have it all primed. And this stuff, uh, it's pretty warm today, 70 degrees. This stuff dried pretty quickly. Not fully, totally dry, but and it's really smooth. 
really smooth. So we're gonna go ahead and just go through and sand this. Um, I'm gonna start off with uh, some 600, smooth it all out. Just basically all we have to do is scuff it uh, so the paint's gonna adhere properly and then we'll get to painting this. I've got some 600 on the orbital sander. We're gonna machine sand this smooth. Makes it quick and easy. If you have an orbital sander, you can use that. If you wanna do it by hand, you can do it by hand. You could also wet sand this. I don't typically wet sand stuff. I don't really see the need for it. I dry sand most everything. I use 600 because we don't want 320 grit scratches or 400 grit scratches. We don't want the paint to have to fight to cover those scratches. Um, we just want to promote adhesion of the paint and 600 is going to be perfect for that. Finally, I'm going to scuff over this with a red scuff pad just to make sure everything's nice and smooth. You don't have to do that. If you've sanded it well with 600, you're good to go. I've already blown this vehicle off to remove any dust and now I'm going over it with some sprayway glass cleaner. This is a glass cleaner that doesn't have any additives so it's safe for painting. And then I'm gonna wash over it with some wax and grease remover. It's important to get it nice and clean before you start painting. Because I have limited time, I'm not gonna retape this for paint. Typically I would retape it for paint and clear, but we're just gonna clean it really well and then paint it. So about an hour ago, we started this project. We started off by cleaning it with some water-based cleaner, then some wax and grease remover. Then I went ahead and sanded it with some 320 grit sandpaper. We masked everything off. We primed it, I let it cure. It took about a half an hour for it to cure. And then we sanded it with some 600 grit sandpaper and now we're ready to spray it. So we cleaned it once again. Let's get some paint mixed up and spray it. So we've got two to one. There's the two to one mixing ratio here. We're gonna follow the two column down, put in the amount of paint we want and then we're gonna go over to one column and put in the reducer. Now, the amounts are gonna coordinate. So if we're putting two parts paint, we're putting two parts reducer. Okay, so we're gonna add our paint and then we'll go ahead and add our reducer. We'll mix it up, put our 3M gun on, lock in the top. I'm gonna to go ahead and tack rag the hood again right before I spray it remove any particles of dust that might have landed on this vehicle. Now I am spraying it with the 3M Performance Gun. I am using the 1.4 tip for the base, and then we'll go ahead and do a 1.2 tip for the clear coat. So when you're spraying a hood, you wanna make sure you're overlapping around 70%. Overlapping 70% is gonna help prevent tiger stripes and metallic modeling. Tiger stripes is when you can see stripes in the metallics, after you clear coat it and that's not good. So using the proper techniques are gonna eliminate those things, help to eliminate those things and give you a better quality appearance in your paint. So you wanna overlap 70%, you wanna have a consistent speed and a consistent distance from the panel. And that distance is typically four to six inches away. The other thing I wanna to stress to you is use the proper reducer for the temperature that you're spraying in. They make different reducers for different temperatures. Now it's about 70 degrees and that would really call for like a mid temperature reducer, but I'm gonna go ahead and use a slow so it takes a little bit more time to cure and dry. It'll give those metallics time to remain wet and lay down. So after about 20 to 25 minutes, this paint was dry and I was able to go ahead and tack rag it before I went ahead and applied my second coat, eliminate any particles of dust that are on the panel, make sure there was no imperfections that I wanted to take care of before I put my second coat on. I'll finish up this second coat. We'll put one more coat of paint on it, and then we'll talk about the clear coat we're using and why we'll be able to clear it and drive it 30 minutes later. And then we'll take a good look at the finished product.
Now it's time for some clear coat, and the clear coat we're using today is the Transstar Select Flash Clear Coat. This is a quick drying clear, and this is why we'll be able to paint this, and then 30 minutes later, drive it home. So this clear dries completely in 30 minutes, and you're able to wet sand and buff it at that point. Now after 10 minutes, it's dust free, and then after 15 minutes, it's fingerprint free, and then 30, completely dry, ready to go. So we mixed it up, it mixes up four to one, four parts clear coat, one part activator, and we're using the 3M Performance Gun with the 1.2 tip. We're gonna use the same techniques as we were using when we sprayed the base coat. We wanna overlap 70%. We wanna be four to six inches away. And then we have our air pressure bumped up a little bit to about 26 PSI for clear coat on this particular gun. Now those are gonna vary depending on the gun that you're using and you can check your uh, manufacturer's recommendations for those settings. We've got our fan pattern wide open and I have the volume turned three turns out from closed. Now this clear coat is designed for one double coat of clear so that means there's no flash time for this clear coat. You just put two coats on and you're done. If you follow the channel, you know that I've used this clear coat in the past and it has a nice shine, nice gloss, nice deep finish, and it buffs out really well if you buff it within that same day. Now, if you wait a couple days, it is a little bit more difficult to buff that I've, I've found. Um, but overall, a real nice clear coat. As far as the durability, I'm still kind of unsure of the durability. I imagine it's a five, five to seven year clear. Um, but we're going to test it out because this is my personal vehicle and I'm going to have this vehicle for a while so we'll see how durable this clear coat actually is. Listen up. If you find this video helpful and want to support the channel, all you have to do is like this video and leave me a comment down below. And be sure to check out the link to my storefront down in the description. There you can find all the tools and products you need for your project. Okay, let's finish up this clear coat and then we'll check out the final results. It's been about 35, 40 minutes since we cleared this Honda. And as you can see, we have a nice high gloss flat finish and this vehicle is ready to be driven home. Now we have a few little particles of dust that we can correct with wet sanding and buffing. And you can do this at home in your garage. It's not that difficult. To learn more about paint by the repair, check out one of these videos now. I appreciate each and every one of you watching and we'll see you next time on Garage Noise.